Hello, my name is Michael Mandeville. I'm here at Creative Explorer, and we're checking out today something I did on uh, a few days ago, um, a smart stage or a virtual stage, one that makes use of game technology software and uh, existing sets. One would say it's almost on a green screen, but it's more of a cyclorama and um, using this technology with uh, a game engine called the Unreal Game Engine. Essentially, it uses a um, reality software called NCAM, which allows the camera in real time camera tracking to provide a live pre visualization of environments to set extensions and CGI elements directly in the camera while you are shooting. So the camera tracking allows one to have a considerable leap forward in these capabilities with a um, robust use of lensing as well as um, perspective with the models that are in the game engine uh, at, the, at the time you're shooting. So let's take a look at that. So right here are the three kinds of software that I'm encountering right now, two of which we'll uh, be looking at today. One is called the NCAM. So this allows you to use these sensors here that are on the camera um, and to be able to use that for tracking. So it's markerless tracking and that's what's kind of interesting is it uses the differential of the pixels. So if there's a dark area and a light area it starts to pick that up and track it. And so as you can pan and tilt the camera boom you've set your tracking markers. In Adobe Premiere or After Effects or this other match moving software I've used, I think it was called Synthize, you actually had to set up all these trackers to actually get the model just right when you put it in to the software. So you'd have the footage and let's say in After Effects and then add the model and be tracking the model that you're using and the footage to combine and comp or composite the two uh, or more elements. So, but in this case, you could do it while you're actually shooting, and I think that's kind of interesting. It works, um, it gives you a lot more flexibility uh, to use uh, this kind of technology. The other one that we're looking at here is called the Unreal Game Engine. This you'll be familiar with first-person shooter games, but it's also used considerably in um, other areas like architecture, visualization, fashion, style, commercial shoots, and other kinds of storytelling. So um, it's actually free, but it's very complicated. But you can see you can actually do automotive work, here's games, training and simulation, etc., including VR. So I think that's pretty amazing. Uh, most of you probably play some kind of first person shooter game and get that. So, and then the other one here that I'm going to be exploring is called Twin Motion, which actually interfaces between the Unreal Game Engine and different kinds of software. Unreal Game Engine is written in C++. It can be very complicated. My understanding, although I've only just kind of opened it, is that it can be um, a bit challenging to um, use, if not master. So that kind of gives you a sense of these three. So let's now move into taking a look at the stage where I went. All right, so of course, every visit has to start with a selfie. And you can see here I am. We've got two gentlemen here are technicians, Derek and Devin, and another visitor watching the demonstration. Of course, here's me. We're all wearing our masks, so you don't know what somebody really looks like, actually. So um, then you can see right here that it's basically one guy, Derek, operating the camera. We have a green screen uh, material here, but it's actually a psych so that it which basically means that it bends in the corners and uh, where the walls meet here so that it gives you a sense of infinite space what's interesting is the setup and here's the camera here the psych continues all the way over here and uh, here's the workstation so we basically have pretty easy setup workstation with monitors here if you needed to watch that and close up on the workstation and the cables that lead right to it uh, are here's the NCAM system that we talked about this right here in the center is the model that you'll see the excuse me the monitor on the camera and right here this third one is where the animations or the assets 
that are put uh, into the system and appear on the monitor. So you have a separate department. One is the uh, VFX technicians and coordinators on the NCAM and then you would have another team over here and they worked on I think it was um, Midway I think they had about eight to ten people dealing with the assets oh no it was uh, Aqu Aquaman as well so uh, this is my friend Jack who invited me we'll see him again later but you can see it's a pretty simple setup they put it on a cart if they have to move around like an Aquaman or Midway they uh, told me they did and you could move from side to side fairly quickly so it boxes up nice now when we get actually to looking at the monitor you'll uh, see right here that we have um, uh, the psych camera operator this is the NCAM system so what this is doing is tracking and that's on the two um, sensors right here in the front of the camera that uses uh, pixels and older times they would add markers up on the ceiling that look like kind of um, targets if you went target shooting uh, in this case they actually use the differential between this parallax I believe to get uh, and figure the differences in pixels so here is also what's on the monitor so NCAM, what's on the monitor, and this is the asset actually here, which uses not Maya, but a, I think it's Motion Builder that it's actually using. So that's the basic setup. So right here we can see, uh, look at the camera. Again, the sensors are down here. You can see uh, them right uh, at the bottom of the base plate right here. You could use... Um, many kinds of lenses whatever your camera can use uh, I believe most of them will work so um, when we actually set it up uh, you would be able to see that there is um, the helicopter and the model that we looked at inside here now remember here's the psych and then here's the monitor and that was the middle setup and then the asset the animation or the um, assets, whatever you want to say, um, are fed into the monitor. So you can actually see how it's going to look. And that means that you can actually dolly back, tilt, pan, whatever you want to do to get a better framing. Now, this is not the final because there's no shadow here. There's a shadow on the car, but there's not a shadow on the guy. So um, in that case, you would use this for a reference point and then finalize it later. Also in this case they decided to um, take and add a um, fire next to the helicopter. So they moved the person way over here you could add a little fire that there's a little danger going on and all of a sudden you've got a different shot and that was easily added into the shot. So you can see how versatile it is to do something very quickly and effectively. All right, now that you actually know the setup and kind of get a feel for it, that there's three parts moving here. There is the end cam, which is the tracking footage on the camera itself. There is the monitor that you can watch what is appearing in the monitor on the camera. And then you're able to see what the asset is or the model, the 3D model that can be manipulated by your animation uh, team. So let's hear some words from the guys actually doing the work here. Yeah. yeah, there it is. So. so if you have her and the helicopter right there, and the helicopter itself is obviously yeah. in the computer and whatever, yeah. if I didn't like the color of the car, you can just I, change it. I could just change the color of the car. Yeah. And just. And you can move hey, it. Can too. you give me a blue one and then boom and then yeah. we're ready to go? I mean, it would take like maybe 10 seconds in car. <laughs> That's great. Now we're looking at the ass end of the... So maybe can... I can go be an actor. I think you should, Jack. I think there you, you should. Right there. there. So. <laughs> and right here you can see as he moves the camera that the camera inside the animation monitor moves back and forth, pans, tilts, etc. So this gives you a really good sense of placement. 
So right now, let's take a look at another advantage of the smart stage, which are the 8K monitor systems that actually reduce uh, or practically eliminate having to do camera car work. They've been using this since the TV show with Kiefer Sutherland called 24. That's where I first heard about it, and that's been about eight years or so ago when it, they started doing it. Using a camera car trailer, for those that have not used that, uh, involves depending on the size of it, uh, four police at uh, 40, 50, 60 dollars an hour with their motorcycles, um, a special rig that takes some hours to put together, um, even if you have a really great key grip that um, knows how to do those mounts very, very well. And then you have to load the car up in there and rent the car. So take a look at this. Now, we're over here, we're getting to see, here's a picture of me in front of the monitor. So we have this one here where the San Francisco Bridge, the Golden Gate Bridge, is behind the vehicle. Here is the side. So theoretically, if I'm driving, you'd be able to look here and see how um, cars passing me as you're doing an internal reverse on the driver, if I'm driving. Um, right here, I'm with my friend Jack, who has got a great shirt called Virtually Here. So I think that's pretty good and pretty apt. So I want to give him a little screen time. Uh, this gives us a sense of uh, two things. One is they have these monitors in front. So now as the cars are going by in this virtual um, camera car trailer, let's say, uh, you're going to get a black car and it's going to diminish the light. Or you'll get a white car and uh, throw some highlights into the vehicle. So having these two monitors gives a little sense of brightening and um, uh, darkening at the appropriate time, uh, a sense of real uh, lighting in traffic. I think it's specular lighting. And here's the back panel that you can actually see of all the monitors and run over here by this controller. Now they can actually put in a lot of kinds of background. So it's kind of fascinating to see the setup. Pretty simple. And if you've got a lot of car work, it's certainly something that's gonna save the day. So you'll have to use your imagination, but what I did is have the gentleman here just step in front of the screens, and you could see how, if a uh, little massaging, that this could really work if you have a lot of car work these days. Not to mention during this particular pandemic that you may have to shoot individual shots because it's going to be a little tough to maintain social distancing in a car. So that's an added element to consider. Let's take a look. And action. Uh, yeah, if you get that way as well, you would see the driving. Hey, buddy, where do you want to go tonight? Let's go drinking heavily. <laughs> <laughs> Once you see it through a car, really. So you'll have to use your imagination, but what I did is have the gentleman here just step in front of the screens and you could see how, if a uh, little massaging, that this could really work if you have a lot of car work these days. Not to mention during this particular pandemic that you may have to shoot individual shots because it's going to be a little tough to maintain social distancing in a car. So that's an added element to consider. Let's take a look. <laughs> 